I want to bring you up to speed on, on the background on this story. It was a little more than 24 hours ago. We were on board. I was on board Amtrak 501. We were covering the historic Amtrak ride, the 6 a.m. departure from Seattle. We interviewed live a, a man named Rudy Wetzel, uh, and that was at 7.03. We got off the train, and Rudy stayed on board. He was headed to Centralia. And he was on board when that train derailed. Now, a little more than 24 hours later, Rudy is sitting right next to me here at a hospital bed in Olympia. And first and foremost, I am so, so thankful that you are doing okay, Rudy. I, I, we, we thought about you from the minute it happened, having just talked to you. Um, tell, tell our viewers how you're doing. I'm, I'm doing, under the circumstances, very well. I've been treated very well. And... Uh, excellent care. First responders did great. Other citizens helped and I'm recovering and things will be good. Take me back to that moment, that moment when you were uh, on the train going about your morning, getting closer to Centralia, your farm. What happened? Well, I, I decided to take a, a little nap, a short 30-minute nap, and next thing you knew I was flying all over the, the train and uh, when, it's, when it was all over, uh, I, looked, I tried to orient myself, and I was underneath the part of the train, and people were above me, and uh, I, I realized that I was actually outside of the trail because I was laying on gravel, and I was pinned to the, to the gravel, and uh, uh, so I decided the gravel was very loose, and uh, uh, so I moved, moved it away trying to uh, cover uh, my exit and uh, realized that uh, I heard the engine running and I realized that the engine was behind me and there, shouldn't, there should not have been an engine close by me so I was very much afraid that the engine was still pushing on, 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 on the train and I could see right next to my head uh, a rail car wheel uh, completely in the air. So I, I was very much afraid that this thing would collapse on me. So I dug myself out and uh, crawled out and I was going to help some other people, but I realized that uh, I needed help myself. And uh, thank God a young lady came by and grabbed me and drug me out and uh, put me out into safety. Wow. And, and, uh, I think you said 81 years old. Uh, you, right. you you were uh, a cop in Los Angeles for what was it? 22 years. 22 years. You've one you've in nine days. <laughs> one month and nine days. You you've seen a lot, especially working as in law enforcement in Los Angeles. How does this compare to scenes that you've responded to yourself? This was ex this was the biggest wreck that I've ever seen, where I was participating in. This was just it was horribly. I thought. The, Initially, I thought there was uh, an explosion that somebody had put a mine on the on the track or something because it was it was horrific. Wow! And I, I want to talk a little bit more about that response. You, we we were speaking earlier. This happened in, in in somewhat of a rural area. I mean, this right. wasn't in the heart of a city anywhere. Uh, but you were pleased with those who came to your rescue. Absolutely, army showed up, uh, state troopers showed up. Citizens showed up. It, it was uh, amazing to see. You can't really describe it. Everybody was helping. Everybody was helping. And excellent cooperation between the uh, organizations. It was just very good. One thing that um, surprised me a little, uh, y you told us you'd, you'd be willing to take a, a train ride again. I certainly would. It's, the train is so safe. I've done this for 10 years. I ride up and down uh, almost once a week or twice or three times a month. I never had anything. Like, we've had derailments, but they were nothing like this. And I've actually never been on a, on a, a train derailment on this line, period. And, uh, you know, it's much safer than a car and, and much much more relaxing. I usually read or do something else or sleep. And uh, this time I was going to sleep. And I, I do want to ask you quickly. Last night uh, news came out that the train was f 
initial reports indicate that the train was speeding at a, a pretty big clip, 80 miles per hour, and what is supposed to be a 30 mile, mile per hour zone. What's your reaction when you hear that? It, it, I've never heard, I've never seen the train go that fast. And I was not aware of it because I was napping. And uh, yeah, I, I don't, this train is very safe. I mean, I just don't, I cannot understand how, how this can happen that they would crank up this, uh, the train to this kind of speed. Mm. It's, uh, something went wrong somewhere. I want to end with this. Uh, you, did you get any sleep last night? Tell, tell our viewers how, I, I, I know you have a couple broken vertebrae in your back. How are you doing uh, as you wake up today in uh, the hospital here in Olympia? They treat me so well, the, me the medication takes away the pain. I'm fine. You are a good man, and I'm, I'm so, so thankful that uh, we are able to have this conversation. And, and we, we were thinking about you from the minute that that uh, dera derailment occurred. And, and obviously, we continue to think of the families of, of um, the, yeah. uh, all those affected. Yeah, I'm, I'm very lucky when I consider all the other people that were hurt much, much more severely than I did. That's Rudy Wetzel, uh, an amazing man. And uh, as, as we send it back to you, we are going to stay. Uh, we're streaming live on our Facebook page as well on, on King 5. So as you're watching our broadcast this morning, uh, we're going to uh, speak with Rudy for a few more minutes. But uh, an amazing man who um, I'm going to stay in touch with you, Rudy. We're, we're, we're going to be friends. This is uh, th this this guy is, is just wonderful and so uh, so kind in what was uh, a very difficult day uh, for so many.